Hello and welcome to this new course exploring assemblage. Assemblage covers a very wide variety of artwork. Uh, here are two contrasting examples. Uh, this beautiful coloured landscape by Penny from my Plymouth class uh, and this intricate, um, very carefully constructed um, boat made by Ian from my sculpture class. In this four session course, we'll look at a different approach each week. This week, we'll be looking at using natural materials to create hangings. People often think of assemblage as quite a modern art form, but in fact, it's one of the oldest. Um, dream catchers and medicine wheels are good examples, um, bringing different elements together to create something more powerful. So that idea from dream catchers and medicine wheels of taking natural materials and build them together to make something uh, with resonance is what we're going to be exploring um, very very loosely based on on those those sort of forms so i've got a number of different things here i've got um, twigs some is some's quite fresh so it's quite bendable some's a little bit stiffer i've got feathers I've got stones I've got bits of wood i've got some natural fabrics a bit of cotton of hessian a natural hessian string uh, just in case i need it i've got some wire and finally to add a little bit of color in there these are dried um orange slices you might add shells or anything else that you can lay your hands on have a look what you can find next time you go out for a little walk or in your garden right so the first step is building frames. Let's get started. So I'm starting off with a freshly cut um, stem. It needs to be fresh so it's nice and pliable, nice and bendy. But even though it is, I'm still going to take my time gently teasing it to get it to bend without snapping. And my aim is to be able to get it all the way around into a circle or something like a circle. And then twist the thinner end around the thicker so that it holds. Put it a little bit tighter and make that hold. Got it. There. Now it doesn't matter that it isn't a perfect circle. I now start to add in more twigs. I'm going to poke that end through the gap and then take this one and twist it through again carefully, pushing it through. I'm going to do that over and over again, twisting one around the other. That's two. Oops, pinged out, don't worry. If you're struggling with getting it to stay in place, you can always use a little bit of wire to help you. I'm going to carry on and build this up with several layers of twigs and what you'll see as you work on it is it gradually becomes stronger and stays more in shape okay back in a minute so here's my uh first ring i must say that it took me a couple of goes i would recommend that you make sure that your shoots are as thin as possible as long as possible and as fresh as possible Mine were a little bit dry and snappy because I'd had them in overnight, so I went and cut some more. Okay, you'll see that there are bits which are sticking out um, still, and these can be tucked away into the weave or simply trimmed off. Pair of secateurs or sharp pair of scissors would do the trick. And now that I have my basic frame, 
I can start to play with it. There are a lot of things that you can do from here. Let me just show you a few examples to whet your appetite. The first thing is I can start to put pieces across ways. I can thread them through the gaps like so. And I think I'm going to put a few like that. So it's quite a big gap there. I'm running mine parallel. You could do yours at different angles. You could make a very definite pattern. Don't need that quite as long. Put cut that in half. I'm also letting mine stick out the end because I think that's quite interesting. I'm going to pack them in so that they hold. Alternatively, I could wire or tie them in. So let's keep going with that. Just starting to get a little bit tighter now. That's good. That's sort of holding in. And then, do I want to do something in that direction? Quite like the idea of a composition a little bit like that. But what I might just try to do here is go in and out of those pieces and pull it over. The frame like that that's nice and tight that is i could put a second one in going the other direction and it might just snap i'm not quite sure well let's try and see so come up from behind i'm going to go over that one. Oh, is it going to work try the other end it's a little bit more flexible no it's not it's not going to don't want to do it does it let's just see I have to shortcut it, just do some of it. That's it. That work. I just do some of it. There we are. Push that down to oh, caught down together. And I can continue building up like that. Um, other things that I could consider doing. I could create shapes within here using string. In different directions tying it that's threading it through um, I could take larger pieces of wood like this and use this weave again to thread through and grip and hold it <laughs> I quite like that idea I could take fabrics and put them through as well in there and finally I could start to attach things around the outside I could hang things for example these slices of orange sticks and stones oh I forgot my feathers of course I can poke the feathers in all kinds of the gaps all the way around. Just not poking those in there. Right, I'm going to have a play. Uh, when I come back, I'll show you what I've done, and then I'll show you a second type of frame, uh, which is more suitable for doing weaving on. So there's my first hanging. I'm now going to move on to looking at a different way of creating a frame, which is more suitable for weaving. So here is um, a woven hanging um, on a wooden rectangular frame. Again, hanging lots of different things off, but concentrating particularly on weaving in this sort of direction. So I'm going to show you how to make a frame uh, that you can do this on. I'm now going to make a frame more suitable for weaving. Um, some nice, strong, fairly thick twigs. The knobblier the better. Although you can get away with bamboo and so on, but if they've got little knobbles on, it gives something for um, the string to sort of attach onto. 
And the first thing is to join up the corners. Quite useful to have little V bits like that if you can find them. Now there's a secret to this, a fairly long piece of wire. You can get away with just binding with string, but if you do it with wire, it tends to be a, that little bit stiff. You start this one corner. What I'm going to do, roughly in the middle, I'm going to put that under and give it a twist. So I'm going crossways, that way across, and then I'm going to go under and back crossways again, get another tight pull and twist. See why I start in the middle of the wire, it makes it a lot easier. And then to help stop it slipping, I need to make sure that I wrap around each piece at least once. Does that makes sense? Try and have I got enough wire just about. See why you need a long piece wrapping around and then twisting as tightly as you can. This is a green garden wire that I'm using here. Plastic coated so it's not tough on your fingers. Next little twist with the pliers. And took that out of the way. And what I can do, let's see how it's nice and, and firm, it's still flexible a little bit. Uh, what I can do is then, once I've done all four corners, I can wrap it around uh, with some string to make it look a little bit prettier. Just three more corners to go. So I've bound my corners with wire and then overbound with string. Just got the last one to do and I thought it'd be useful to just recap the method. So I've gone diagonally across first tied a knot. I'm going to go under the other diagonal to the top and tie a knot. Nice and firm, as firm as you can pull it. That's why it's useful to have a long piece of the string. And then I'm going to wrap the string all the way around the inside of this piece of wood and then onto and around the next one a couple of times. The other end I'm going to wrap around that one a couple of times and then around this one here a couple of times at least. If you've got more string the better. So with the string and the wire that wrapping around creates friction so it's less likely to come apart the sticks are less likely to pop out now with this last one I'm actually well the others I've trimmed off the knot but I'm just going to leave a little bit um, and you'll see why in a sec so I want to start from here and start to weave or create my weaving frame I should say. So I will just tie that onto another piece of, onto the ball of string. Okay. And the method is a little fit, bit fiddly. I'm going to come down, I'm going to wrap all the way around, trying to keep it tight, so all the way around and then up all the way around. Notice that the first string in front of the frame, the second one behind. Try to keep that pattern. Keep it as tight as I can. Wrapping it under. By binding it around a couple of times, it helps keep it from slipping too much. And then again. And keep going like that. If it becomes a little bit loose, you can always pull it tighter at the end. I'm going to carry on, get that finished. So my frame is all strung up and ready to weave. 
I'm going to start with some quite natural materials. Um, I have this piece of hesse which I've cut down the middle almost to the end to make it a little bit longer. And the first line is very straightforward because it's straight through that gap in the middle between the front and the back. Put that through. And pull it down. And then I'm going to take Hesse, wrap it around the back of the stick, pull it tight. And now I need to do the opposite of what I've just done. So I'm going to go behind the string that's at the back and in front of the string that's at the front. That makes sense. Can you see that? It begins to pull it nice and tight. Pull that across and then pull it down. So I get a quite a nice tight bind. That's a little loose, so just pull it a little more. There we are. Okay. I could tie that end together, but I think I'll leave it loose for now. You can, if you like, introduce every now and again a stick, a tensioning stick. It follows the same pattern over, under, over, under over under this takes can be a bit, a bit confusing which way round if you do anything under that's it and that simply oh maybe that one should have gone in front there no. pulls down to squash okay i'm going to go with a contrasting color i'm going to start with some White, now which way do I want to go? Oh, yeah. Under, over, under, over, under. If you are thinking of doing this in the garden, do think about using materials which will biodegrade to so natural fabrics like cotton, muslin, fleeces are lovely actually. If you can get hold of a little bit of sheep's fleece. And I'm starting with fabrics, but there's absolutely nothing stopping me from using other things um, like sticks. Just checking I've got the weave right there. Pull that all the way through. Catch in there. Um, different size strings, wool, um, feathers, anything that you find can be added in. They, you can add in short pieces within there, or you can add pieces which stretch all the way across. I might just do one more row of white and then add in some of these sticks. Back in a minute. There's my weaving so far. Um, I like the gaps that the sticks naturally create as well. So it's a much more open sort of look to it. And now I could uh, add some string to hang it from, start to hang other things onto it, or put objects inside these bits. If I wanted to do like the example I showed you earlier. You might prefer something which is much, much brighter. Um, this, for example, is all using cotton fabrics, um, but working with much, much more of you know, brighter contrasting colours. So those two techniques uh, are suitable for all ages, but you may find for younger children that it's a good idea to build the frames for them first, and then they can really uh, let their imagination run. Uh, but it's just as engrossing, I think, um, for adults, they're things you can hang around the house or in the garden if you have one. Um, there's going to be a slideshow now 
of other examples of environmental art. Uh, just to give you further inspiration, um, some by more famous artists, some uh, that I've just found on the internet. And if you Google environmental art or natural art, you'll find lots and lots of examples for inspiration. And I'll be back in a minute to tell you about next the next session. Next session, we'll be looking at using assemblies to create a, a landscape, working with things like tissue paper, um, wallpaper, corrugated paper, different textured papers, stones, sticks, maybe string, uh, bits of net, that sort of thing. Um, and we'll be working with, uh, with paints as well. Um, I'll be demonstrating with acrylic paint, but also with um, some stronger inks. I'll talk to you about the paints next time. Don't get anything special. Hope you have lots of fun with today's session. And if you do do Facebook, please post pictures of what you create on our uh, Art for All Facebook page. Uh, details coming up now. Bye bye.